Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time I've got a full tank review for you on the upcoming Tier 8 premium British medium tank, the FV4202P. The FV4202 is going to be a Ridgeline Warrior's dream with 10 degrees of gun depression and fairly competitive turret armor allowing you to outplay your opponents if you can find a hill to hide behind. Combine this with the 20 pounder, which has a very reliable 226 millimeters of penetration on its standard rounds, the best that there has ever been on a tier eight premium medium tank, and you can take out your opponents one by one by one. But just don't expect to get anywhere fast, otherwise you might be surprised at who overtakes you. I'm going to update you with everything you need to know about what will be the first tier eight premium British vehicle in World of Tanks. Compare it to the competition, follow it up with some ace tanker gameplay, and maybe then you can decide whether it's going to be worth participating in the mission marathon coming up this month. And if you have no interest in playing the first tier eight premium British tank in the game, then hang around anyway, and I'll let you know how to take them out effectively on the battlefield. So before we look at the statistics of the FE4202P, if you're new to World of Tanks, you might be thinking that this is a brand new tank that we have never seen before. However, that is not the case. This used to be the tier 10 British medium tank before it was replaced by the Centurion Action 10 in patch 910. One thing that's great about the FE4202P is that the model has been refurbished. This vehicle is in HD and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It looks very modern, but considering this vehicle was made through 1956 to 1959, you can understand why. Now, the FV4202P never entered mass production. It was sort of a halfway point between a Centurion and then the Chieftain. And if you ever go to the Tank Museum during Tank Fest at Bovington in the UK, then you can see one of these in the Vehicle Conservation Centre. So let's see how the statistics of the FV4202P compare to a lot of the more recent premium Tier 8 medium tanks. So here we have the FV4202P, the Panzer 58 Mutz, the AMX CDC, the T-54 First Prototype, and the T-26 E4 Super Pershing to compare with all tier eight premium medium tanks. But I'm also going to add in a tier eight non-premium heavy tank, the Carnarvon. Unfortunately, right off the bat, the FV4202P has the lowest DPM of any of these tanks. In fact, it has one of the lowest DPMs on any tier eight medium tank, premium or not, only doing better than the T-34-2 and the T-44 when they use 122 millimeter guns. And when we compare this, for example, to the DPM on the AMX CDC, it is not a small decrease. But on the other hand, while the FV4202 cannot kill tanks quickly, it can reliably damage them without having to resort to fire premium rounds and that's because the 20 pounder that this vehicle has gets a penetration of 226 which is 14 better than the previous best in class premium medium tanks the Panzer 58 Mutz and the AMX CDC. There's only one other tank at tier 8 medium that has that kind of penetration and that's the British Centurion Mark 1. The alpha damage on this 20 pounder this 83 millimeter gun is 230 which is 10 less than the standard 240 at tier 8 and 20 less than that on the T-54 first prototypes 100 millimeter gun. Gun. However, the rate of fire on this tank is the same as the Mutz and the T-54 first prototype, even though its alpha damage is less, and that's why it does have this DPM issue. The roller coaster continues with the gun handling on the FV4202P. It is absolutely awful. It gets 2.6 seconds aim time, which is 0.2 worse than even the T-54 first prototype. The accuracy as well, while it's not terrible, it's not exactly brilliant, it's 0.35 which is worse than the AMX CDC, only slightly better than the Mutz and the T-54 first prototype, and way worse than the 0.32 accuracy that this 20 pounder has when it's mounted on the Carnarvon. Well, how about the dispersion when moving the hull? Well, it's 0.22, which is the same as the T-54 first prototype, slightly better than the Super Pershing, but much worse than the CDC and the Mutz. And as we can see here, the turret traverse is worse than all of these other tanks in this comparison, and horrifically worse than the Mutz at 0.18 rather than 0.1. However, thankfully, this tank does have 10 degrees of gun depression and 20 degrees of gun elevation, which gives it a lot of flexibility to work ridge lines. A bit like all of these tanks, apart from the T-54 first prototype. So how about the mobility for the FV4202P? Well, this is where it gets really ugly for this tank because it has the worst top speed limit of any medium tank tier seven and above. 
Here they all are, all of those medium tanks, tier 7, 8, 9 and 10. And at the bottom we have the FB4202P with a top speed limit of 35 kilometers an hour, which is 5 kilometers an hour worse than even the Super Pershing. And this is a massive limitation for this tank. It prevents it from relocating faster than a heavy can, which is kind of the role, in my opinion, for a medium tank on the battlefield. I like to analyze the map, see where my team needs me, and have the speed to be able to get there. I love the flexibility of medium tanks, how you can adapt to the situation. And that top speed limit on the FB4202P certainly isn't going to allow you to do that. This tank also gets a very bad engine. 510 horsepower, that's nearly as bad as the Super Perk which gives this tank the second worst power to weight ratio of any tier 8 premium medium tank. So let's put some of these tanks in a drag race. Here we have the Panther 88, not one of the fastest tanks with regards to its horsepower to ton, the FB4202P and the Super Pershing, which really is more of a heavy tank than a medium, and Grease Lightning over here, the AMX CDC. And they're off! The FB4202 is keeping up with the Panther 88 with the Super Pershing lagging behind, unsurprisingly. The CDC, however, is racing off into the distance, doing a bit of a wiggle and insulting him by raising his gun. Now, the FB4202 caps out at 35 kilometers an hour, while the Panther 88, which is not limited to 35 kilometers an hour, is able to race on ahead. Now, the Super Pershing, which actually has a better top speed limit, is going to start to catch the FB4202P as it is limited to 35 kilometers an hour, even though its horsepower to ton ratio is just so bad. And just to show you that in a bit uh, as an example, here is the Super Pershing top speed limit of 40 kilometers an hour going down slope with the FB4202P top speed limit of 35 kilometers an hour. And as we can see, once the FB4202 caps out at that heavy tank kind of top speed limit, even a Super Pershing is going to start to whiz ahead of it and make it look like a very slow vehicle. And the FB4202 really is one of the slowest medium tanks that has ever been in World of Tanks, at least at high tier. Thankfully, however, the FB4202P does have some very nice ground resistances, which is going to mitigate some of this disadvantage that it has with its power to weight ratio. The turret traverse speed on the tank is 36 degrees and the tank traverse speed is at least a rather nice 40, so it's not going to take you too long to turn and re-engage your opponents. Just don't hope that you're going to be able to chase them down or avoid them from catching up to you. So the armor on the FB4202P has been heavily nerfed as it's been moved down from tier 10 to tier 8. The frontal armor on the tank is 50, the side is 50, and the rear is 31, and the turret armor is in places 170, 90 on the side, and 90 on the rear. That looks like a very nice turret, comparable to the T-54 first prototype, and probably in places with the spaced armor to the Super Pershing. However, we can see that if we use a live model, that to be able to ricochet shots off the FB4202 hull, you do have to angle the tank very highly. Until you get to this kind of an angle, the frontal armor on the tank is only 115, meaning that anything that shoots this will be able to pen it. And if the enemy are taller than you, well, you've pretty much got no hope of bouncing off anywhere on the front plate. But let's imagine that you get this tank hull down using its 10 degrees of gun depression. Well, how is its turret going to hold up? Well, as we can see, the turret ring here is 200 millimeters, which is rather nice. And you're going to be able to bounce most tier six, seven, and quite a few tier eight tanks if they do hit your turret ring here. But watch out that they don't shoot directly at your tank because to the left and to the right of the gun, there is no spaced armor and all that they're going to have to get through is this 115 millimeter plate also the cheeks are only 85 millimeters thick and even when you're using 10 degrees of gun depression they don't get over 70 degrees of armor angle that you need to be able to ricochet unlike the roof of the turret which now reaches 74 degrees which will ricochet pretty much everything in the game but notice the difference between an FB4202P that's using its 10 degrees of gun depression and an FB4202P that isn't. You see how the forehead of the tank or this top part of the turret is a ricochet here, but as soon as you're not using the gun depression, it's only 130 millimeters effective, which you easily can go through. So that means that if you're shooting at an FB4202P and he's not using his gun depression, you can pretty much just auto aim anywhere at the turret and it's going to go in. However, if he gets on a ridge line and activates those 10 degrees of gun depression, you cannot pen the top part of the tank and you're best to shoot directly at the gun or hit the cheeks. Thankfully, the FB4202's view range is 390, which is way better than the T54 first prototype and 10 meters better than the Mutz. And so hopefully, even if you don't have the speed to be able to harass your opponents, you're still going to be able to spot them and shoot them as they're running away from you. 
And so I think that's quite enough theory crafting. Let's get stuck into some gameplay. And so here we go. We are playing on Sacred Valley. Oh, this is a 44%er. So we're going to have to do some carrying here. They've got some decent players in their top tier tanks. But the matchup is very nice for us. Only three tier 8 tanks on the enemy team. One tier 8 self propelled gun. And then the rest are half tier 7 and a half tier 6. I don't really feel like matchups are that important for the FP4202P. Um, when you've got 226 millimeters of penetration on your standard ammunition, you don't really need to fire that many APCR rounds, even though they've got 258 millimeters of penetration, which is which is very nice indeed. When you do get into tier 10, if you really need it, you can use it. But I think that we're going to see the only premium rounds that I fire in this game is when I did the whole of uh, my playing through the FP4202 was when I ran out of ammunition on my standard AP rounds. It's just just that good, really. 226, you, you don't really need that much more than it. I really feel like that's the kind of the, the sweet spot in, in World of Tanks, thinking about it. You know, when you've got the, the 226 on the, on the IS-3 as well, I feel competitive with that. However, when I start to get 200 millimeters, that's not quite what I'm looking for. And I have to admit, in this position right now, I am in my option settings customizing things because obviously I'm not playing on my own account here. I'm playing on what? FB42025. And all of my settings in the game were messed up. So right now, what I'm doing is this I'm going into my marker settings, I'm changing them how I like my marker settings. And then I notice that I get spotted and I start to get shot at and I panic and I come out. And then hopefully I'm going to see now. Oh, I'm getting shot. Probably want to do something now. Oh, look, there's a, there's a Churchill, a Churchill 7 gunning right for me. Well, how about you go do something else, Mr. Churchill 7? Maybe you play a different kind of tank. Go sit in your, your garage for a little bit. But luckily for me, the M4043 on the enemy team is dead already. So by actually going AFK in these bushes, we managed to get a tier 8 self-propelled gun, a very decent skilled tier 8 self-propelled gun, killed by providing vision from our artillery. Oh, nice shot there into the Jackson. And yeah, 390 millimeters of view range is very nice. Uh, it's kind of right on the cusp of where you might want to consider dropping out optics and instead just using vents. But You'd have to have a very skilled crew to do that. And I still think that the best way to go on this tank is going to be vertical stabilizers, a gun rammer, and coated optics. But just check out the aim time here. When I do a full turret turn, at 2.6 seconds of aim time and awful dispersion values, it just doesn't feel like a medium tank. But just keep an eye out on that for, uh, for this replay. That's something you should definitely consider if you're thinking about investing either the time or the money in picking up one of these vehicles. Look how long we have to be stationary for to get a shot on the IS. It doesn't help that the Jagdpanther 2 gave me a bit of a, a love bump from behind there. Tried to fire one on the move, but instead fire straight into the building. Bit of a disappointment. The the gun dispersion, the accuracy on the move, all of those things. This, this really is a, a stop and aim for three seconds kind of tank. It's not like a, the Ripper pattern or the Mutz or even the CDC, which I feel quite competitive when I'm firing on the move. Luckily that IS misses us and we know with our seven and a half rounds a minute rate of fire that we can progress and finish him off before he reloads. Thankfully somebody on our team set him on fire which lowers his health enough for us to secure our second kill of the game. Unfortunately for us however, and this happens a hell of a lot on Sacred Valley, when the enemy have got very good tier 8 heavy tanks and you, you don't or you have tier 8 medium tanks and tank destroyers they generally are going to win the north of the map. Good hit there into the SP-1C on the enemy team, right through that wall. And I notice there's a Chaffee to my right. We bounce a shot from the SP-1C. They just hit our tracks. And we turn our attention to this tier 5 American light tank. Want to take him down. Don't want to give him our side armor because the 50 millimeters of protection that we have on this side of the tank isn't going to do very well against any gun that the Chaffee might be using. We put one into him and our trusty ELC buddy behind us finishes him off and we progress around the back of this abbey and this is the top speed limit of the fb4202 if you guys don't think i've got my finger down on my w key or something well fortunately you're going to be mistaken as we mentioned in the statistics review of this tank that 35 kilometers an hour 
the slowest tier 7 and above medium tank with regards to top speed limit. And I think it's only the Super Pershing that is going to do worse than this in a drag race. But this is, this is the tank in its environment now. I'm on the hill. I can use my 10 degrees of gun depression. I've got fairly okay camera rating. And I've got 226 millimeters of penetration, which is more than enough to contest the front of even fairly heavily armored tanks, such as the IS-3. And we can also spot for our friends. We've got a huge amount of view range here when we're using our coated optics. We've got brothers in arms on this crew. We've probably also got situational awareness and recon, all very useful skills for your medium tanks. So not only are we going to be spotting our opponents, but we also seem to have the camouflage rating to avoid getting spotted by them. And so they can't see us, and we can see them. And we've got a nice sniper gun. Well, doesn't matter about our 2.6 seconds of aim time and our bad gun handling. We can just harass our opponents. Look at that aim time. It's absolutely horrendous. Every single other tier 8 premium medium tank, at least that was released recently, would have fired that pretty much a second before the FB4202 and then been able to pull back. And remember that aim time is important when you're in tanks that don't have very much armor. You don't want to be sitting there all day giving your opponents opportunities to put shots into you. We pull forward, put a good hit into the ISU-152, and we bounce a shot from the IS-3, and I'm like, please, Mr. Cromwell, don't sit behind me right now. And thankfully, we get back in time to avoid the shot from the Hummel. So we're in a bit of a siege here. I feel like uh, we've got a load of Indians on the enemy team, and I don't know, we're playing cowboys just sitting up on this hill, watching them try and run at us. It's not quite working for the enemy team right now. Um, and it's not going to when you've got the FV4202 just dominating all of the vision, dictating who he can penetrate as well with the decent 83mm gun. 83.4, I guess. I know it's called the 20-pounder, but it is exactly 83.4mm. A very fun... Oh, funny, sorry. A funny gun caliber there. So just looking for a shot on that T29. But turn my attention back to the IS-3. Did you see that aim time on a full turret turn? Definitely feels more like a heavy tank. I make sure that I'm not going to shoot the ELC and I hold my mouse cursor down where the IS-3 was last spotted. But right now, I'm just taking punts at that IS-3, hoping that he's still tracked. But again, turn my attention to the KV-2, aiming, 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 aiming. Finally managed to put one into the IS-6 there. So I think you're seeing where the FE4202 needs to be played. It's a long range sniper. You need to try and get yourself into this position. It looks like we actually managed to hit that IS-3 quite a lot. Now I do something really bad this game. I don't realize how I got spotted. And uh, yeah, that BL-10 on the ISU-152 just took away a huge amount of my hit points. Very unhappy about that. But he gets finished off. I hope it was worth it, Mr. ISU-152, and maybe it was. Now I'm in a, a low hit point state and I'm worried about the Hummel hitting us. But thankfully, there's no, more, there's no more tanks approaching on the northern flank. And so that means that I can just hopefully spot out from here. And there's nothing that's still going to be able to spot me. Put a shot into the IS-6. We fire, but we get spotted this time. What was it that hit us? Maybe the KB-2 was the one who spot us? Oh, he just stopped pulling back and we miss his turret. Unfortunately... We have run out of AP rounds on this tank now. And after this game, I did reduce the amount of APCR rounds that I was taking on it. Because frankly, you just you just don't really need them, especially when you get in a matchup like this. And I'm just going to be wasting credits now. The 0.35 accuracy of this tank rearing its ugly head. The Carnarvon would probably be able to have done that on the first shot. But thankfully, right through the KV-2's turret there. And now... We get to put a shot into the T-29. And another one into the IS-6. Hopefully finishing him off. We can tell he's got a dead driver. It's always useful, that eagle eye perk right there. And this poor guy, he just can't see us. There's nothing he can do about it. We pick up our top gun, 3,600 damage. What a result. And I'm not going to pretend like this was the most skillful game. Frankly, it was just putting a tank which is a, a very good ridgeline warrior into an effective position, holding the cap circle, 
and watching as my opponents made mistakes coming after us. But then again, it's what we needed to do. DLC gives me a little bump from behind, but it doesn't matter. We're reloading a high explosive round here because I wanted to cheap out and not fire APCR at the Hummel, but our Yag Panther manages to shut him down. So this replay certainly wasn't flashy, but frankly this tank isn't. It doesn't have the mobility or the gun handling to be able to whiz around the map, pulling off clutch shots and then running away. This tank isn't trying to pretend to be the AMX CDC or even the Panzer 58 Mutz. It's simply a slow tank with poor gun handling, albeit with a very reliable 20 pounder and a sturdy and flexible turret. One thing that I should mention is this turret ring is so prone to damage and I guess that's because it is very prominent. Quite often, I'll use my repair kit repairing the turret and then it'll be damaged on the next shot that I take. And here's a good example of taking turret ring damage in this tank. The first shot that hits us from the SP-1C jams our turret. Let's just take a quick look to see where that went in. Right there, we repair our turret and then just a few seconds later, the very next shot that penetrates our tank from the Mutz jams our turret again. It is a very frustrating aspect of this tank. And if you suddenly shoot the FE4202 roughly in the turret ring and then it starts to kind of wobble around a little awkwardly, then it's more than likely that you have jammed the turret and you can use that to your advantage, maybe try and get its flank and harass it. Anyway, let's just take a very quick look at the post-game stats. And here is the real reason why you play your tier 8 premium tanks, right? It's not because they're as competitive as vehicles such as the Centurion or the Carnarvon. It's because they make a giant wad of cash and experience which you can either convert off or use to train your crews. This was our ace tank and we got a high caliber and a top gun as well. Over 4,000 damage done, 1,742 base experience. That's really big for a tier 8 premium. And we also did 2,000 detecting damage as well, using that 390 base view range on the FE4202P. Unfortunately, at the end of the game, we did have to fire a few of our APCR rounds as we ran out of AP, and afterwards I adjusted the amount that I had in case we had to carry a game such as this again. But even still, we made 87 thousand credits profit when you take our ammunition costs out and if this was on my account my comic crew would be very happy that we got 2874 experience with a premium account and that wasn't for our double the kind of shots that we fired this game were really chancy and that's why we only hit 25 out of 38 that we fired and 20 of those penetrated but when nearly two-thirds of the damage that we dealt was done so at over 300 meters you can understand why our marksmanship wasn't flawless. So maybe you're thinking that this game was a one-hit wonder and that I was just incredibly lucky to have the matchup and the position. Well, of course, that matchup and the position allowed the FE4202 to have a game that you very, very rarely have in premium medium tanks. But the purpose was to showcase the strength of the FE4202P and how you need to position yourself to be effective in this vehicle. I played 21 other games solo and managed to win 77% of those games, getting 1,240 average experience per battle, nearly 1,900 damage, and 800 assistance damage on average per game because of the fantastic view range on this tank. Now the armor use efficiency on this vehicle was 0.44, which is certainly not amazing, but does show you that when you accentuate that well-angled 50 millimeters of hull armor and get your turret hull down, you can still pull off the occasional bounce. Now I'm not saying that the FE4202P is amazing. I would far rather play the Mutz in pretty much every situation and when you compare the FE4202P stats to the Carnarvon and the Centurion Mark I, it is pretty much worse in every regard apart from reverse speed than the Carnarvon or its ground resistances, but this is balanced out by its terrible power to weight ratio. And so I wouldn't recommend to participate in the Mission Marathon series if you think that you're going to get a very competitive tier 8 premium medium tank because that's simply not going to be the case and I thoroughly don't recommend that you purchase this tank unless you love British vehicles and you want to train up your British medium tank crew which is why I will be participating in the mission marathon because you know I love my Comet and I want to train up my Comet using the FE4202P. There are now so many premium tanks in the game that it's getting harder and harder to be able to judge whether they're competitive or not. I think one of the best ways to do this is to compare them to their standard counterpart tanks. And let's not beat around the bush here. The FE4202P is very similar to the Centurion Mark I, 
just like the Panzer 58 Mutz, is very similar to the Indian Panzer. You'll know if you watched my recent Panzer 58 Mutz tank review that I really liked that tank. Fair enough, it's got 10% worse DPM than the Indian Panzer, but it had much better aim time and gun dispersion values to kind of balance that out, as well as also having some rather tricky turret armor to get through at 120, whereas the Indian Panzer only has 90 at the front. However, when we compare the new FE4202P to the Centurion Mark I, the gun performance is exactly the same, but the aim time is much worse, the accuracy is worse, the dispersion is worse, the top speed limit is worse, the power to weight ratio is worse, the turret armor is worse, the side, the rear armor is worse, and the frontal hull armor, apart from that awful lower plate on the Centurion Mark I, is worse. The health is less, and the view range is also less. And so what you've got to ask yourself is why is the FE4202P so statistically inferior to the Centurion Mark I, whereas recent releases, like the Panzer 58 Mutz, is just as competitive as, for example, the Indian Panzer. And a lot of the cynical players in the community are highlighting the fact that the FE4202P is going to be grindable as a mission, so maybe Wargaming are not making this tank as as competitive as other vehicles which you could only purchase for money. And I kind of agree with them on this, and I think that it's a real shame because the FE4202P is the first Tier 8 British premium tank in the game. The US has got the Ripper Pattern, the Super Pershing, the T95E2, the Germans have got the Panzer 58 Mutz and the Panther 88. The French have got the AMX CDC and the Revolerice. The Soviets have got the T-54 first prototype and if you're on the Russian cluster now the T-44-100. The Chinese have got the 59 pattern, the T-34-3 and the Type 59. Even the Japanese have got the SDA-2. And so I'm not sure that Wargaming realized just how important the FE4202P is to British tank lovers. And for it to enter the game with the current stats that it has just makes me feel eh, a little bit disappointed. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And if you want to see a review of the mission marathon, which will enable you to earn an FV4202 for free later this month, then simply click through up here or use that more info icon in the top right hand corner of your screen. And let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the FV4202. Do you think that it's going to be competitive? And are you a British tank driver who's just a bit disappointed that the first tier 8 premium British tank in the game is going to be a little underwhelming? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.